In this video I'm going to be talking about notes in the shader editor in Blender and just how to make some simple procedural textures. I'm going to start off by talking about the texture coordinate node because this is a pretty important node to at least understand the basics of. And then I'm going to show you how to make these six basic shapes here. Uh, we're going to make them, we're going to play around with them a little bit and change the shape and then we're going to see you know, how we might use these shapes as well. So let's get started. First things first, let's look at the texture coordinate node. On the right I've got a, a plane set up and I'm just viewing it from the top there. And On the left I've got the shader editor open and I'm just running a very simple material. It's the texture coordinate node leading into the node wrangler viewer node just into the material output. And In order to have this viewer you have to have node wrangler enabled so just make sure you do but you probably do already I'm guessing. A nice shortcut by the way is to hold down control shift and left click on any node and it shows that node's effect on your final material output. So right now we're looking at the generated node coming out of the texture coordinate node. And on the right we see you know, this nice colorful pattern, but it's a little tricky to get a handle on. So I'm going to introduce a node that just allows us to um, you know, make a bit more sense of this here. And that is the separate RGB node. So plugging that in, it separates this image on the right into three color channels, red, green, and blue. Right now we plugged into the red, and we can see uh, it is represented in a shade of gray. That is how the value is translated. Now basically, black is equal to zero on the left here, and white is equal to one on the right here. And that means that in the very center it would be 0 0.5. So one thing I want you to notice is the red value it goes from left to right in a positive direction. That's actually the same as the x-axis that is labeled in red. You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I didn't really realize that until uh, recently. I was just kind of thinking about it, and uh, it was just kind of interesting. So I just wanted to point it out. Let's check out the green channel, and we can see the same kind of thing happening here. Zero is now on the bottom, and one is on the top. 0.5 is in the middle and again it goes in the same direction as the y-axis which is labeled uh, with a green color. And then finally we can check out the blue channel and it actually just looks kinda gray because there's actually no change. The change would be if we had some Z dimension to our object but since we don't it's just a solid middle gray color. So another thing we could put in here instead of separate RGB is uh, a similar node and that is separate oops, uh, separate XYZ and if we plug this in it actually gives us the same kind of value um, it's not exactly the same I, I, I mean I assume but if, for what I'm going to be doing here today it's it gives the same results so I'm kind of treating it as the same so separate XYZ kind of the same thing X you know same as the red value uh, y is the same as the green value, and Z is just the blue value again there. So, just uh, just to make a note of that, separate X, Y, Z, and separate R, G, B are similar, just for what I'm doing today. Let's take a, another look at the texture coordinate node. It's still coming from the generated output there, and it's going right into the material output. We've got the same color we saw before, but now we can make a bit more sense of it. I actually find it kind of helpful to overlay this graph here. This is what I'm used to seeing, the horizontal x-axis and the vertical y-axis. And we got the origin point just in the bottom left corner of this object. So I think it's useful to think about the generated output basically projecting a coordinate system onto your object uh, with the origin point being in the corner. And it's actually more accurate to have these numbers instead of 1 to 10. It should actually be 0.1 to 1, but I just found it a little easier to work with these whole numbers at first, uh, but it's just more accurate anyways with the 0.1 to 1. So next we're going to check out UV. I'm going to skip over normal for now. not really sure how to use that one, but uh, UV is pretty similar to generated in that we've still got the origin point on the bottom left, and if we plug in a separate RGB node, we can kind of see what's going on here. It's the same red pattern, left to right, same green pattern, bottom to top there. The blue, however, is different. If you recall in the generated node, it was a 
medium gray color, probably a 0 0.5, and this is more like a 0, so it's showing you a different slice of the z-axis. But besides that, the x and y values are the same for generated and for UV. Next step, we'll check out the object node here. I'm going to plug that in, and it looks a little different. It's actually very similar to UV, but now the origin point has changed. So I'm going to get rid of this graph and bring up another graph, and this time the origin point is in the middle. Let's see what that looks like when we plug in a separate RGB node. You can see now the red values, anything less than zero is black, so half this graph is black, and green, same kind of thing but on the y-axis, and blue, once again, it's just black. So this one here, it's same as UV, but now our origin point is in the middle. Now one final thing I want to mention about the object node is that uh, you can actually come down here and select an object to kind of move the origin point around. So I'll show you what I mean. On the right here I'm going to add in an empty and then I'm going to come down here I'm going to select my empty and then on the right I can move that empty around and it changes the origin point. So you can have an origin point uh, anywhere you want in your object this way. It seems like it could be useful. Okay, we're going to start out by making that first shape here. Uh, it's basically a linear relationship, and the formula is y equals 2x. So I've got the object output from my texture coordinate node, and I'm going to feed that into a separate x, y, z node. And uh, from there, I'm going to add in a math node, and I'm going to change this to multiply, and change this bottom value to 2. And what this does is it uh, basically multiplies every x value by 2, so it, it takes care of that 2x portion of the graph. I'm going to make another math node, and I'm going to change this to greater than, and then plug the y into the bottom socket of that node. And what this does is if the top value is greater than the bottom value, then it returns black. And if it's opposite, it returns white. So this is just kind of a useful way to make two colors there. And we can change this. If we change greater than to lesser than, it just swaps black and white. So I'm going to change this back. The second way we can change this graph is by changing this value here. We can change this to 4, be steeper. Change it to 0.5, be less steep change it to negative 4 and it would be in the other direction. So we can change that around. It's still a linear relationship but we can adjust it a little bit. And the last way you could play around with this is you could add another math node in there, change it to add, and this is now an offset. Okay, let's take a look at this second object here. It's going to be pretty similar to the last one. We're still going to use the object output of the texture coordinate node. But this time the formula that we're going to try and recreate is y equals x squared. So we'll start out the same way. We'll enter in a separate x, y, z node there. And we'll add in another math node. But this time instead of doing multiply, we'll select power instead and go to 2. So we can see what it's done. It's basically squared all the x values over here. And what that means is even when we have negative x inputs, we get positive outputs just because there's, you know, when you square a negative number, it becomes positive. So we're going to do the same thing as last time, make a second math node, change this to greater than, and connect the y socket to the bottom there. Again, we have a parabola, and we could change it back and forth by changing this to less than. I'm going to go back to greater than. And we could also add in another math node, change it to add. And again, this is an offset here, so horizontal on the x-axis. We could also add in another math node, just another add one to the y. We could control that y offset. Okay, next we're going to take a look at shape number three there. And this is going to be very similar to the last shape here. We're going to add in our separate x, y, z. We're going to add in a math node. Change this guy to power. And instead of two, we're just going to change it to three because we're going to go for y equals x cubed this time. So add in another math node. We're going to change this to greater than and connect our y to the bottom. 
there we have our formula y equals x cubed and again you know we can swap this around go to less than changes the the colors there back to greater than and we could uh, throw in some values here uh, change it to add first throw in some values here and just move it back and forth same as before offset it on both axes if you want there so you can see like just a little sliver there just get some interesting shapes here it's not quite a straight line but it's getting closer and then you can change this value but it's definitely a lot less stable let's just put these back to zero so you can see so if you were to change this it's a lot less stable than um, you know the multiply was it's basically if you want to do a wider parabola you know you can keep on going up in even numbers um, but or odd numbers here as well but if you do any decimals then it's gonna get kind of a little bizarre and crazy okay we're gonna make the next shape and this is getting a bit more complicated we're gonna try to make a circle here and I actually got this from default cube he had a series on procedural textures Okay, so let's start out here. Let's uh, separate x, y, z node just like before. And now we're going to add in another math node. And we're going to change this to power and change the bottom value to 2. We're going to do the same to the y value. Just duplicate that math node and plug it in. And now you can see we've got the y squared and the x squared values there. And we're going to actually add those together. Make another math node here and change it to add and then just plug these guys in here see what that's looking like it's already a circle but we just want to tighten it up a little bit so we're going to do two more steps we're going to add in a square root node and then we're going to add in a greater than node then we're going to tighten this up put it to 0.5 we've got our circle just like that and the way to adjust this is with this value here can increase this and it changes the size of the diameter just up or down okay we're gonna take a look at this shape number five we're on now and this is a diamond shape so I'm gonna put this together the same way we were doing the other ones with the separate XYZ node again and we'll add in a math node and we're gonna change this to absolute and bring it down and attach the Y to an absolute as well and bring this in and change this to add and just add them both together we're gonna do one more thing we're just gonna do greater than so there we go we got our diamond that was pretty quick um, you know it's kinda similar to the circle but it's just got the linear relationships on the side there so anyway same kinda thing here too you can just bump this up and down and it'll change and uh, we could always add in an offset here as well and just kinda move this up and down depending on which axis we're putting this on. Okay, we're going to take a look at shape number six now. This is uh, it kind of looks like a leaf to me, and we're going to do the same thing at the beginning. We're going to go separate x, y, z, and then go ahead and add in a math node. And uh, we're actually going to do a combination between the circle and the diamond. Let's just go ahead and plug this in here. So we're going to use a uh, power on the top power to 2 and then we're going to do uh, absolute on the bottom and then we're just going to add these together so let's go ahead and make a new math node change it to add we'll just add those together so yeah finally last step is to add the greater than node we'll just point this to 0.5 and there we go we got our leaf just like that a couple ways we could change this around again um, we could change the power and the absolute. Let's try and just swap spots there. That shortcut, by the way, there, I'm just holding down Alt, left clicking on a node and dragging it off, and it just disconnects there. So, anyways, I changed this around, and now the leaf is just oriented differently. Let's try something here. Maybe try not a power node, but we'll try a multiply node, and we can just see we get stretchy effect there. So, we do that in the X or Y factor there. So, Okay, let's take a look at this parabola again and just try and modify it a little further. Uh, so we can see the setup again. It's just the separate x, y, z going into the power and then the greater than. We're going to actually duplicate that and just make a second identical parabola. So just plug that guy in there. Nope, it's wrong. Put that guy in there. 
and this guy in here. And that just gives us the same parabola here. So what we're going to do is add in, I don't need to search, just add in another math note there and move this parabola just down slightly. Oop, that should be on this guy here. There we go. So what we've got here is one parabola that's just hanging below the x-axis and one that's just sitting right on it. And I'm going to change the color of that bottom parabola by changing this greater than to a less than. Now it's a white parabola and this is a black parabola. And I'm going to add in a mix RGB node and we're going to mix these together. Well, not actually mix, we're going to multiply them together and change that to one. And now we have this white band running through. And we can take it even a little further, mostly by adding in add, multiply, divide, subtract notes. Those are going to offset and just kind of change it. So let's try an add note here, for instance. We can kind of see, you know, uh, why don't we put it on this one here? We can kind of see it gives us these interesting shapes to go back and forth. If we were to change this to multiply, we kind of get some other stuff here. Uh, again, you know, pretty interesting. If we were to put this on the X, it give us, uh, looks like pretty similar shapes. But yeah, that's a good way to change it around is just to add another dimension and just multiply them together and then just use multiply or add notes. You can change quite a bit. Let's take another look at this circle as well. We can do something similar here. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate all these guys here and then just make an identical circle down here. And then let's, let's change it a little bit, this bottom one. Let's make it a little bigger. And I'm going to add in an add node here. And we're going to put this to zero. And then we're just going to, let's move it uh, you know what, let's put it on the Y dimension there. I'll just move it just a little down, just like that. Okay, so uh, another shortcut, by the way, with Node Wrangler is to hold down Control shift and right-click on one node and drag it to the other, and it'll all automatically mix those two nodes together. So here, for instance, it gave me a mix shader. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit here. We'll go Multiply. I'm going to drag this up. And right now we've got kind of like two circles intersecting each other. And I can change one of these and it'll be uh, the opposite color, if you recall. So now we've got kind of a crescent moon shape there. So that's kind of interesting. And we could move this around and it just kind of changes that shape there. Uh, just however we want. We could do this as many times as we want and uh, just be really creative with this stuff. All right, well, let's look at uh, an actual use for some of these textures that we're creating. Uh, this is the texture I just created with the circle inside another circle. And one use is to use this as a factor in combining two other textures or two other shaders or whatever. Let's look at a simple example here. Use this to control a mix shader. I'm going to bring a mix shader in here and then a diffuse and then a transparent. Just like that. Oops. Plug the diffuse to the top, transparent into the bottom. And uh, yeah, basically, uh, this guy here, when I bring it to one, or pardon me, to zero, it's completely diffuse. And when I bring it to one, it's completely transparent. And I just have to switch over to cycles to see that. So now it's completely transparent. Bring it back. It's, you know, in the middle, it's halfway. So this color data here, we can use this to control this factor because black is equal to zero and white is equal to one. So what that means is everywhere there's black, it should be this diffuse green. And everywhere there's white, it should be the transparency. So let's try that out, plug it in and take a look. And that's exactly what we see. So we could swap that around and now it's the opposite. So that's it. Uh, you know, I encourage you to try playing around with these six shapes and just kind of making combinations between them and tweaking parameters and, you know, see if you can come up with something cool.